Hi, my name is Robert Farrell. I want to share with you the benefits in the art of setting up your own reseller account for your customers. If you have a reseller account from me or any place else, these are the steps you would take to make sure things are set up correctly. So whatever domain name you're going to use for your reseller account should be pointed to the correct hosting plan that you're using. You would get that information from me or who's ever providing your hosting. So let me take you through a few steps on things like creating a child name server, etc., etc. So we have this domain name, createselectedit.com. So let's say that's going to be your hosting, your main WHM. WHM stands for Web Host Manager. So inside your domain registrar, where you bought your domains from. Now, if you bought your domain name from me, then it pretty much looks like this. You scroll down to your domain reg registration and make sure your contact details and everything is set up. Now, if it already isn't set up this way, I would suggest that you click privacy protection. This way, somebody can't spam you with email. I would also suggest theft protection. I would turn on and as well to stop somebody from stealing your domain name also make sure your name servers are pointed to the same place so let me share with you a very simple way to set up what's called a child name server now child name servers are good is good for branding purposes so let's just say your main reseller account is my super reseller account.com you might want to have name servers that reflect that ns.mywebsite.com so here's how to do it oh you're going to have to know your IP address. Now, the IP address you would get from me, or you could do a who is lookup. If you do a who is lookup, it's who is host. So if you don't have that information, just get it from me or wherever you basically bought your hosting plan from. So here's what you can do. We're going to set up a child name server. So again, the name of the domain name is createselectedit.com. So what we can do here is make this ns1 name server one dot create select edit.com now sometimes spelling helps jeez i guess can't spell today okay now that's going to be connected in order to set up a child name server your host name that we're going to set up for our name server needs to go to an ip address so when you put in put an ip address now it's totally up to you. You would typically set up NS1, NS2, and they can go to the same name server. So in this particular case, I'm gonna use the same name, th sorry, the same IP address. I'm gonna save that. Then I go to NS. In fact, I could be totally lazy. Copy, paste, let's call this NS2. And let's copy and paste that same domain name. Now, depending on the plan that you have, I typically provide you with two IP addresses, but I'm just keeping this really simple in case your hosting plan provides you with one IP address, and I'm going to save that. Now, once this is set up, I then basically click here. So that set up the child name servers. So what I can now do with that is I can take my host name, my child name server, and put that into my name server here. So I can basically do this copy and paste so now i can create a child name server automatically for me and update the name servers so that's a very professional way to set up your hosting plan this way it's branded with your hosting plan id so if you're going to have a hosting plan called my super hosting plan new york city then you can be name server dot my super hosting plan new york city so let's move forward and go into whm web host manager now let me give you a short lesson on pointing domain names domain names need to be pointed to name servers. In this particular case, our name server is ns1.createselectedit.com with hyphens, the same as our domain name, okay? So domain names point to name servers. Name servers point to IP addresses. The IP address has to be listed with that particular hosting plan that you're using. So in this particular case, if you bought hosting from me, there's two separate products here. There's WHM, which is Web Host Manager, and there's cPanel. Now, if you have a reseller hosting plan from me or any place else, you have one WHM account. Let me repeat that. You have one WHM Web Host Manager account, but every account has cPanel. So in this particular case, I would take my domain name forward slash WHM. 
No, I'm just going to go. Oh, it's going to prompt you to log in. So I'm just going to log in and come right back. Once you're logged into your WHM Web Host Manager, now if you're on my hosting plan, my hosting plan has a secure SSL certificate. So you're going to be pointed to Think Web Hosting in your account. So you're right now you're inside of your account, but it's going to switch to this domain name because it's a secure server. So just some basic principles here. Here you can list accounts, you can park accounts. It's really very straightforward. But here's how easy it is to set up an account. I'm going to go to create a new account. And I'm going to put in my domain name. So I'm going to put my domain.com or whatever your domain name is. Okay. Now, depending on the version that you're using, I've noticed a little bit of issues with some of the newer versions of Web Host Manager. Make sure this doesn't pass seven letters, eight letters, two, four, six, eight. If it does, you won't be able to set up your WordPress because WordPress is going to get confused with a database that has more than eight letters in its, in its username. So make sure your username is at least eight letters long. Now, what I typically do for security reasons is I don't just go with that. I would do something like my DOM and then I would do like a series of numbers. And again, that's just my own personal preference. Make sure, again, this doesn't go past eight letters. Password, of course, I would generate a password. email address I would suggest to put it in the client's email address because they'll be sent this information because this is your client's website obviously if you're setting up a new website for yourself you put it in your email address so let's just put my client at, at my client.com for my email address again put it in your client email address because that information will be sent to them then you would choose a package the package is set up based on what privileges you have so I'm gonna pick a 100 megabyte website package then I'm going to scroll down here now here's the important part if you want by default the server set up to go to this name server but keep in mind we just set up this name server here so make sure that you click this and it will ignore this it will do the name server that we set up here does that make sense so make sure you're on top of your game and just don't just start clicking buttons. Make sure you know what you're doing. Okay, this will tell you how many accounts that you have. This particular reseller hosting plan has 25 accounts you could set up. So right now I have zero of 25 and I simply hit create. And choose select and create your domain name. The information will be down here. Now what you would do is copy this and put this in a safe, secure place. And I would take this information, I would copy, send that to the client as a backup, but also put that in a safe place for you to use. So very important step here. Okay, so let's say now that this account has been set up, I can now go to list my accounts. I'm just going to go to LIST and click list my accounts and I can see the accounts that I've set up here. Now, for whatever reason, if you want to change the password from here, you can change that. But of course, you would have to notify the client that you did that. Okay, the client is not going to have access to this back end management, but the client can go into their cPanel and change your own passwords. I want to be very clear about that. Setting up a new web hosting account with WHM Web Host Manager is very simple, very straightforward. Now let's talk about cPanel. Again, when you have a WHM hosting plan, you have one WHM account that manages and supports and lists and creates and deletes and all that stuff with your different domain names that are your clients. But every domain name has a cPanel. So what you would do is go to the click your domain name forward slash cPanel. And once again, you'll be prompted with a login. Spelling cPanel sometimes helps. If you're logging in, your cPanel for the first time you're going to be presented with this I have no patience no need for this I'm going to say hey don't show this again now as a basic overview it's really quite simple cPanel is where you can set up custom email accounts now on my hosting plan you have by default what's called a catch-all email address so let's understand what that is again our domain name in this particular case is createselectedit.com with hyphens 
So if I send anything to anything at createselectedit.com, it's going to go to me. It's, I'm going to get it in my main email account. I want to be clear about this. This is called a catch-all. So if you want to type in Joe, Billy, Jennifer, Tila, Christine, Stephanie, uh, at yourdebatename.com, you're going to get that email. It's called the catch-all. But in addition to that, you can go ahead and set up separate email accounts right here. So what you would do is put in the name of your email account. I would definitely do a strong password. In fact, I would generate a password and then set that up for what you want it to be. Now, if you want to, to check the email, it's simply going to your domain name forward slash webmail. I want to be very clear about this. So let's say that we had an email that was Tila at, and I'm just going to generate a password. and create an account. Okay, now when you generated that password, make sure that you copied it someplace so you can use it later. So therefore, if I wanted to go and check my webmail right here, I can check my webmail from right here, access webmail. Now here's an important step. When you go to access your webmail, I'm going to copy that. Your password you would put right here, but if you do this by default, so let's do this again. If I was to go to my domain name, forward slash webmail, what it's going to ask me for is a username. The username is going to be the email address, the full email address, and then you'd put the password in there. So I just want to share with you how simple that is. Now, if in fact you want to set this up your Mac mail or anything else, cPanel has a really great way to configure things for you. You can configure client email. When you click here, here's your different configurations. It's really, really that simple. You can configure it for Outlook or Microsoft Word or Macintosh Mail, etc., etc., etc. Just read through the steps here. It'll automatically set it up for you. It's really that simple. So in addition to your email account, you can also, the client can change their password. They can change whatever other functions they want back here. So I just want to talk about the basic bread and butter stuff. So email accounts. Now in addition to that, if you don't have an FTP client, you can go to what's called File Manager and you can basically manage and manipulate your files in there. I'm not going to talk about this right now. Now, the other thing that's very important to understand inside of cPanel on my hosting plan is how you set up WordPress. And WordPress is set up very simply by going to Fantastico. So I'm going to click Fantastico. I'm going to click WordPress. You'll notice I have all these options here on my hosting plan. And I'm going to say, give me a new installation. Now, here's what's really cool about Fantastico. Notice I already have an installation in here. So if I wanted to, with one click, I could remove that installation. Okay, so the file that it creates for you, don't go delete that because you won't be able to remove it that simply. Now, here's something I want to point out to you. When you create a new installation, where do you want to put that installation? By default, it's going to be in your main root directory. I want to be very clear about this. By default, it's going to be in your main root directory. So in this particular case, it's going to go into your domain name.com forward slash index page. It's going to be right here. So here's what I suggest you do. If you want to put it in a separate directory, then fill this in. If you want to put it to a separate directory called blog or my WordPress or whatever you want to put in there, it's totally up to you. Now to configure this, this is what I suggest you do. For the username, I would put in the username and then I would put a nickname. Now here's a very important part for security reasons. Whatever you put in there for an admin name, don't put admin. Pick something that makes sense to you. That would be the admin login name, but the visual name that's going to show up for others to see would be your nickname. That's just a nice security measure. I would also put in some kind of custom email address, either go into the client or if you're going to basically manage the site that's up to you, you install. It's really that simple. It's, it's just, it just follow the bouncing ball. It's really that simple. I'm not going to go into details with that. But what I want to share with you is the difference between cPanel and WHM. WHM is for setting up and managing domain names and web accounts. Okay. 
cPanel, every domain name that you set up in your WHM has cPanel access on my hosting plan and most other hosting plans. Now, in addition to that, you could do things like spam protection, forwarding emails, forwarding uh, domain names, et cetera, et cetera. Kind of just, you know, there, you really can't do much damage back here. So if you want to kind of experiment with the different types of things you can do back here, it's really pretty interesting. So that's how to set up a child name server in our account manager. That's how to set up a WHM web host manager account and also to go to your webmail account and also how we can then access cPanel and go through the different processes here inside of cPanel. Really a lot of cool stuff. cPanel is the industry standard for managing websites once you're inside of that domain name. WHM is the industry standard for managing web accounts and web space. My name is Robert Farrell. Thank you for being here. I will talk to you soon.